this video, I'm going to show you how to solve five flow rate calculations questions and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa. And if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So the questions in this video are from our Naples Calculations Question Bank. This question bank is the largest pharmaceutical calculations question bank on the planet. Now, if you'd like to check it out, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Also, if you'd like to expand your understanding of fluid calculations, we have so many videos on the channel and I'm going to link a playlist in the description as well. So let's get right to it. This question says dobutamine is packaged as 2 grams and 250 milliliters of D5W. A 138 pound patient is to receive a dose of 10 microgram per kilogram per minute. How many milliliters per hour should be administered? Round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the flow rate in milliliters per hour and we've been given a whole lot of information in the question. We have the patient's weight which is 138 pounds. We also have the concentration essentially because we've been given the amount of drug which is 2 grams and then the volume of the D5W which is 250 milliliters and also we have the normalized mass rate which is given as 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So since we want to determine the flow rate in milliliters per hour, we're going to start off with the normalized mass rate, which is 10 microgram per kilogram per minute. And the next thing we're going to do is multiply this ratio by the volume of the D5W, which is 250 milliliters. So you have 250 milliliters. But notice that this 250 milliliters contains 2 grams. So at this point, we are going to begin to take care of some of the units. Now, this grams, we need to convert to micrograms so we can basically get rid of the micrograms in the numerator here. So we are going to use a conversion factor that 1 gram is equal to a million or 1 times 10 to the power 6 micrograms. So now the grams can cancel out and the micrograms can cancel out. And if you are tracking your units, you are now in milliliters per kilogram per minute. So we now need to get rid of the kilograms from the denominator and the way we do that is to multiply this by the patient's weight so we multiply by 138 pounds but here the pounds and the kilograms are not in the same units so we need to convert the pounds to kilograms using the conversion factor that 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram the pounds cancel out the kilograms cancel out and if you are still tracking your units then you are now in milliliters per minute so we need to end up in milliliters per hour. So we need to convert the minutes to hours and we use the conversion factor 60 minutes is equal to one hour. So now the minutes cancel out and we are now in milliliters per hour. So for completeness, we're going to multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide by all the terms in the denominator. And so that would imply then that we have 10 times 250 milliliters times one times 138 times 1 times 60 divided by 2 times 1 10 to the power 6 times 2.2 times 1 hour. And this is going to be equal to 4.7 milliliters per hour. The question says round to the nearest tenth. We are already in the nearest tenth, so we don't do anything there. But the question also says do not include units. And so the answer is going to be 4.7. A medication order calls for a heparin drip at 7 micrograms per kilogram per minute for a patient weighing 174 pounds. What should the drip rate in drops per minute be if the 250 milliliter infusion bar contains 300 milligrams of heparin and the administration set delivers 50 drops per milliliter? Round to the nearest whole number. Do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the drip rate, also known as the flow rate, in drops per minute. And you've been given quite a lot of information in the question. So we've been given the volume of the infusion, which is 250 milliliters. You've been given the calibration or drop factor, which is 50 drops per milliliter. You've been given the amount of drug, 300 milligrams, which is present in the 250 milliliter volume. You've been given the patient's weight, which is 174. And you've been given the normalized mass rate of the drug, which tells you that for every kilogram that the patient weighs for every minute, the patient is going to receive 7 micrograms of heparin. Now, since the goal is to determine the drip rate in drops per minute, 
We want to start off with the calibration factor and we'll be using dimension analysis. And so what that would look like then is you have the 50 drops per milliliter and then we can multiply this by the normalized mass rate of the drug which is 7 microgram per kilogram per minute. So we have 7 microgram per kilogram per minute. And now we can multiply this by the volume of the infusion bag. So you have 250 milliliters. And in this 250 milliliters, you have 300 milligrams of heparin. So at this point, the milliliters can cancel out. And we need to convert the milligrams here to micrograms so that I can take care of these micrograms here. So we make use of the conversion factor that one milligram is equal to a thousand microgram. So now the milligrams cancel out and the micrograms cancel out and they are in drops per kilogram per minute, which means we need to multiply this by the patient's weight. Now the patient is 174 pounds, but notice you have units of pounds and kilograms which are different. So we go ahead and convert the pounds to kilograms using the conversion factor 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. Now the kilograms cancel out and the pounds also cancel out and you're now in drops per minute. And so now the next step is to multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide it by all the terms in the denominator. And that would imply that you have 50 drops times 7 times 250 times 1 times 174 times 1. All of this divided by minute times 300 times 1000. And that's going to be equal to 23 drops per minute. Now the question says round to the nearest whole number, do not include units, and so the answer is going to be 23. This question says 15 milliliters of 12% calcium gluconate injection and 15 milliliters of multivitamin infusion are mixed with 600 milliliters of a 5% dextrose injection. The infusion is to be administered over 4 hours. If the dropper in the venoclysis set calibrates 10 drops per milliliter, at what rate in drops per minute should the flow be adjusted to administer the infusion over the desired time interval? Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to determine the flow rate in drops per minute. And in the question, you've been given the calibration of drop factor, which is 10 drops per milliliter. You also have the volume of infusion, which is 600 milliliters. And then you have the duration of infusion, which is 4 hours. And also notice that you have two additives that are being added to the volume of the 5% dextrose. And that will be the 15 milliliters of the 12% calcium gluconate injection and the 15 milliliters of multivitamin infusion. So in solving this question, we need to know the total volume that is being infused. And so the way we do that is actually to add the volume of the calcium gluconate, which will be 15 milliliters. We're getting that value from here. And we need to add the volume of the multivitamin infusion, which is also 15 milliliters. And that's coming from here. And then all of this is being added to the volume of infusion or the volume of the 5% dextrose injection, which is 600 milliliters. So the total volume will be 630 milliliters. So now we can proceed using dimension analysis to determine the flow rate in drops per minute. And the strategy will be to start off with the calibration factor, which is giving us 10 drops per milliliter. So now we have 10 drops per milliliter. And the reason we want to start off using the drop factor or calibration factor is because it has drops in the numerator. And we need drops to be present in the numerator of our final units. So we start off with the 10 drops per milliliter. And what you want to do now is multiply this by the total volume that is being infused, which is 630 milliliters. Now the 630 milliliters is being infused over a time of four hours. And so at this point, the milliliters can cancel out and now you are in drops per hour. But notice you need to be in drops per minute. So we go ahead and convert the hour to minute using the conversion factor. One hour is actually equal to 60 minutes. So now the hour cancels out. And the next thing we want to do is multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide by all the terms in the denominator. And that would imply that you have 10 drops times 630 times 1 divided by 4 times 60 minutes. And that's going to be equal to 26.25 drops per minute. But notice in the question it says round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. And so that's going to be equal to 26. This question says, 
A physician order calls for isoporterional hydrochloride IV infusion for a patient with breathing difficulty in the ER. 20 milliliters of a 1 is to 5,000 solution of isoporterional hydrochloride is added to 600 milliliters of a 5% dextrose injection. What time interval in minutes will be necessary for the administration of the entire infusion if it is to provide 10 micrograms of isoporterional hydrochloride per minute? Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to determine the duration of infusion in minutes. And in the question, you'll be given the concentration of the isoporterional hydrochloride that is being added, which is 1 to 5,000. You'll also be given the volume of the drug that's been added. You have the volume of the 5% dextrose injection. And also, you have the mass rate of the drug, which is giving us 10 micrograms of isoporterional hydrochloride per minute. Now, the way the question is framed, what we need to do actually is first determine the amount of isoporterional that's actually going to be infused. And the way we do that is to make use of the concentration which has been given and the volume that we are adding to the IV bag. So the way that would look like is you have one gram of isoporterional hydrochloride, which is present in 5,000 milliliters. And this information is from the 1 is to 5,000. But notice we are using only 20 milliliters of the solution. So we need to determine the quantity in grams for the 20 milliliter volume. So we can go ahead and solve for x. x is going to be equal to 1 gram times 20 milliliters divided by 5,000 milliliters. Then milliliters cancel out. And that's going to be equal to 4 times 10 to negative 3 grams. Now we need this to be in micrograms. The reason being the mass rate of the drug is giving us micrograms per minute. So we are going to convert the grams here to micrograms using the conversion factor that 1 gram is equal to 1 times 10 to the power 6 microgram. So the grams will cancel out and this is going to be equal to 4000 microgram. So now we can proceed to find the time and the way we are going to do that is to use dimension analysis. So using the mass rate, which says 10 micrograms per minute, it implies that for every single minute, the patient is going to receive 10 micrograms of the isoporterino hydrochloride. Now we want to multiply this by the total amount of drug that the patient is getting in micrograms, and we determine that to be 4,000 micrograms. So we multiply this by 4,000 micrograms. The micrograms cancel out, and now you are in units of minutes. So the next step will be to multiply all the terms in the numerator and divide by all the terms in the denominator. And that would imply that you have 1 minute times 4,000 divided by 10. And that's going to be equal to 400 minutes. But notice the question says round to the nearest whole number. 400 is already a whole number, so we don't need to do anything there. But it says do not include units, and so the answer will be 400. This question says a physician's order calls for 2 liters of D5W with a 150 milliliter IV PB antibiotic to be run in alone over a 1 hour period and administered every 6 hours. The patient has a 2 liter daily IV fluid limit and the administration set is calibrated to deliver 15 drops per milliliter. Calculate the total volume in milliliters for the D5W, round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to determine the total volume in milliliters for the D5W. Now in order to do that, we first need to know the total volume of the IVPB and then subtract that from the patient's daily fluid limit. Now in the question, the patient's daily fluid limit is given as 2 liters. Now in order to determine the total volume of the IV antibiotic that the patient receives on a daily basis, we first need to know how much the patient gets each time. Now in the question, the patient receives 150 milliliters of the IV antibiotic. And so we are going to put that down as 150 milliliters. The other thing we need is also to determine the frequency. How often is this patient getting the 150 milliliter IV antibiotic? Now in the question, we are told that the patient receives this every six hours. So we're going to pull down six hours. And then the next thing we need is the number of hours in a day. Now the patient here is going to be receiving this for 24 hours because it's on a daily basis. So 24 hours. And so we have enough information to determine the total volume of the IV antibiotic that the patient receives in one day. 
Now, the way we do that is to first take the volume of the antibiotic, which is 150. So we're going to have 150 milliliters. We're going to divide that by the frequency of administration is given every six hours. And we multiply this by the total number of hours in one day, which is 24 hours. The hours cancel out. The six goes into the 24 four times and you end up with 600 milliliters. So the total volume of the IV antibiotic that the patient receives on a daily basis is actually going to be 600 milliliters. Now to answer the question which is asking for the total volume in milliliters for the D5W, what we need to do is actually take the patient's total daily fluid limit which is 2 liters. Now 2 liters, we need to convert that to milliliters. So 1 liter is 1000 milliliters. Now the liters cancel out and that gives you 2000 milliliters. So we are going to subtract this 600 from the 2000 milliliters and that will give us the total volume in milliliters for the D5W. So that last step will be 2000 milliliters minus 600 milliliters and that's going to be equal to 1400 milliliters. Now the question says round to the nearest whole number. 1400 is already a whole number. We don't need to do anything there. The next thing we need to do is says do not include units. So the actual answer here is going to be 1400. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. My job here is done but yours has just begun. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.